Hello artists, Mrs. Arnold here again with another art project for you guys. Um, so today what we are going to be making is a drawing of a hot cup of cocoa um, because we're starting to see some colder days and we had one day of snow last week so that was really exciting. Um, so we're getting into those cold months here so I thought this would be a fun little project. Um, we are going to be kind of reviewing uh, different types of lines and shapes and making patterns with those lines and shapes um, to decorate our mug that our hot cocoa is in. Um, as far as supplies that you will need for this project, I am using crayons primarily. Um, I'm going to need a blank piece of paper, of course. Um, I used a brown marker. If you don't have a brown marker, a brown crayon will do just fine. That's a-okay. And if you want to add a couple of extra touches, um, one material that I had on hand was actually um, cotton balls that I just had in my bathroom. So I pulled those out so that I could use them to add some little finishing touches to my hot cocoa. So I am so excited. Let's get started. Alrighty. So like I talked about before, the only marker I'm going to need is a brown marker. If you don't have a brown marker, that's okay. You can use your crayons or any other supplies that you're using. And then I'm just going to kind of, I'm starting with a black crayon, but I'm just going to leave all of my colors out as options. Maybe I'll pull them all out to make that a little easier. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by making an ellipsis which is the top of our mug. I'm going to make it about two thirds of the way up my paper. And this is basically an oval that is on its side. So it's gonna be wider than it is tall. And then I'm gonna use two vertical lines to create the sides of my mug. And I'm going to connect it with a curving line. Now I'm gonna make my handle. This can be any style that you want it to be. I just wanna make mine kind of curvy. I think that'll be cute. So I'm using just kind of an S-curve to make that. Okay, so next I'm gonna use another curving line and what this is is the top of my cocoa inside of the mug. And so that I don't get confused and I remember that that's my cocoa, I'm just gonna jump in right now with my brown marker and color that in. Again, if you don't have a brown marker, that is okay. Use a brown crayon, it will work just as well. Okay, so I'm done with my marker and now I'm going to pull out my crayons and I am going to first I'll make a horizontal line to be the top of my surface and I'm going to use lines to make a pattern on the top of that table that my mug is sitting on just so that you can tell the difference between my table and my wall. Or maybe you want your table to be a solid color and you want a pattern on the wall, that's okay too. So first I used um, what I would consider a straight line, but as you can see, it's kind of curved because the mug is round. So I am coloring in that space above that straight but slightly curved line that I made. The reason I curved my straight line is because I want to... Um, give the illusion that it's 3D, that it's three-dimensional, it's there right in front of us, and it is a round mug. So I think I'm going to, let's see, oh yeah, a zigzag line. That's what I'm going to do next. That's one of my favorites. So each pattern that I make, I um, just like to switch my color. Um, and you can use all sorts of different lines and shapes for this project. Whatever types of lines and shapes you like, it's totally up to you. I'll fill in this row with circles. So when we talk about lines, you've got straight, wavy, zigzag, you've got your cloud line, your castle line, your water line, your dashed line or um, broken line, we call it sometimes. 
Let's see, I'll do a wavy line with yellow. How about green next? And I will do a cloud line. I think that looks nice. And I'll color in the space between. You don't have to color in all of the space on your mug, but some of the spots you want to color in just so that it has variety and that it looks interesting to look at. Ah, the broken line, my favorite. And as you can see, even though it would be straight if you were looking at it, I still curve it a little bit just to give it that three-dimensional look. So try your best to curve those lines. Let's see, what do I want to do next? Hmm. I'm going to go in with another zigzag line, but then I am going to make a... Uh oh, my dog. Uh -huh. <laughs> he needed some attention. That's funny. I'm going to go in with a straight line right underneath so it actually looks like a row of triangles. So instead of having to draw each triangle individually, I just made a zigzag line and then a straight line below. And I'll color those in. I'll make a water line here. And maybe I'll double it just like I did the cloud line before. I'll color this one in though. Just to keep it interesting. And then maybe I'll go back in with some circles. And I think I'll repeat that purple on the bottom here because I like the way it looks at the top and I think it'll be interesting if it happens at the bottom too. Um, so as far as my pattern goes, I want it to look Christmassy. Um, so I am going to color in each, um, well, every other stripe red. Oh, my dog in the background. Sorry, guys. The mail just got delivered, so my dog is barking. <laughs> So I'm going to color in every other row red, and then I'm going to leave the ones in between white so that it kind of looks like a candy cane um, because it's winter, it's almost December, or it might actually be December by the time you're watching this. Fagin! My pup Fagin is barking up a storm in the front room. And I'm going to make my wall in the background green. And I am just doing my best to color in as solid as I can. I'm keeping my crayon going in the same direction. I'm going all the way to the edges of my paper, filling in those missed spots, and just really filling in that space, trying not to leave any white space in between all of my um like brush strokes, although it's really like a drawing stroke. Oh, so there we are. Um, last touch, if you would like, you could use a little dot of glue and glue down your cotton balls to the top of your cocoa to look like little marshmallows. If you like marshmallows in your cocoa like I do. <laughs> Alrighty, so there we go. You guys are awesome. So there we have it. We have got our cup of hot cocoa. So now that you have got that all finished, remember to take a photo and post it so that I can see your beautiful work. Remember when you're taking that picture, try and take it straight on. Have all four corners in the photo. You can have your smiling face there too if you would like. I cannot wait to see your artwork. Have a wonderful rest of your week, artists. Bye!